Is this video for sailing and entertainment purposes only? You're dang skippy it is. Who's your favorite reaction channel? Somebody asked. Karina. I held on to the nurse. Nurse, clear my schedule. This is Karina Kaboom. Hey. What's wrong with Karina Kaboom? She's a nice lady. <laughs> I was ghosted tonight. <laughs> He had one bite of those eggs and he accepted. Eggs. What's it like knowing that your April Lynn's the one that got away? I am not phased. It's the holidays. What are you doing out here? Hello everybody. In today's video, for the low introductory price of absolutely nothing, you heard it here last, we're going to be taking a look at Anne Boleyn Reed's first social media post after her ex Casey exposed her in a tell-all interview on Mr. Snowflake's channel. I'm going to, as always, link the video down below in my description box. If you haven't seen it yet, please watch it. It's worth a watch. So... The really sad part, in my opinion, is that Anne Boleyn is going to use this whole negative situation of, you know, what she actually did in the past to Casey to her own advantage. Because the first time that she posts a new video, everyone is going to rush to that video to leave negative comments, which will not even be approved by her. She'll get the money from your video views and you won't get your say. Rinse, lather, delusion, Kermit, repeat. It's an embarrassing time to be alive, girls. It's also a wonderful time to be alive. If you have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about. I usually have no idea what I'm talking about. Just try to keep it together for the frogs. You see these Kermits? They need to eat. My point here is this. So, uh, basically, her ex Casey <sighs> uh, did a tell-all interview on Mr. Snowflake's channel in which he exposed many, many, many things a lot of us knew, but one thing that we did not, which is just very, very dreadful, and I'm not going to repeat it here again. We already talked about it in my last video, which will be linked at the end of this one. We're going to get into it also, her last Q&A before the drama started with, uh, you know, Casey and everything that she did, and a foodie beauty update, and at the very end, a Pokemon Go update. All right, we're going to get into all this drama, if you could not tell already, by my ridiculous intro. As always, everything I'm saying is just for entertainment purposes only. I'm only sharing my own opinions, not facts. I'm publicly accessible information made public by public figures. I would urge you to please be kind in the comment section to these people. Please do not go out of your way to go to these people's channels and leave them mean-spirited, negative, discouraging, disparaging comments. Okay, so Amba's first TikTok back, she is acting unbothered. Is she really unbothered? I think that she will take whatever money that YouTube throws at her for you going to her next video, you understand? Because people are very, very upset about what Casey shared. So it's her getting all dressed up and lip-syncing a song uh, you ask me what I'm thinking about, it's the same thing that you're thinking about with a little devil emoji, yes. Please do not bring Satan into this. You know, I have a lot of haters and I really want to prove them wrong. They're all I think about all day. You know, trying to send over some message to her 75 crushes. And Belin said she got three crushes, now it's down to two. Soon it'll be done to negative zero, but it's like some kind of a interesting like ooh hi i'm thinking about you my crush yes she has crushes yes she's an adult and you know like and they're thinking about me or it can be seen it's very it's done like on purpose she does everything on purpose she uses language in a manipulative way which we will see later in her q and a i'm thinking about what you're thinking about it could be a message to her audience that she is thinking about like you know what they're thinking about with the casey interview but i doubt it but she wants you to think that she's thinking about it but she's not she is either never gonna address this have a immediate medical emergency or an aggressive instagram q a is coming about it but it's uh looking like she may not address it who cares honestly at the end of the day uh, she's trying to seem unbothered while at the same time saying, oh, I'm thinking about what you're thinking about. That was her first TikTok. Then she posted this on Instagram. Brace yourself for this. Do you know Amber Lynn Reed? Do you know Amber? I see you over there. I see you. You know Amber Lynn Reed? Don't be shady. Hi, I'm Bambi. You should see me in a crown. Lies? Stay mad. And she has like a crown that she wears and the little devil horns. You know, honestly, what did Satan get? What did he do to get involved with Anne Boleyn Reed? Leave him alone. My God, he's a little busy for you. Basically, she's trying to seem unbothered like she's the queen of the world, queen of YouTube, queen of what? Get a Kermit. Look, 
Uh, obviously, my opinion, and please let me know yours, is that after you were accused of really heinous things and a person shared their experience with you that was really, really heinous is the only word I could think of, why would you be posting these cringy, weird Instagram stories and, you know, Instagram posts and TikToks instead of just addressing the situation? Why say you're the queen? Because, well... No one would ever accuse her of being a narcissist because she must believe she is one. Anyway, so the devil horns, the, you know, the devil emoji, it's as if it's an episode of evil, but they haven't come back in years, whatever. The point I'm trying to make here is that um, Anne Boleyn is trying to seem very, very, very unbothered. Yes, with all the comments disabled where you can't get paid for it. We'll look at why she disables her comments on social media in a few minutes. But basically, that's her post after Casey exposed her yet again. Uh, at the end of the day, I think that the only thing that she cares about is your money when you rush to view the next video. So you could leave the comments that she on purpose is, uh, you know, like not gonna approve. Okay, rinse, lather, delusion, Kermit, repeat. So this is the last batch of Instagram Q&As that Amber did before everything happened. Uh, there's quite a bit of tea in this. I've said this before. So Amber Lynn will answer questions now in a very mundane way. Usually it looks like there's no tea. It looks like there's no gossip attached to it. The same with her videos, but there's quite a bit if you've been in the Amberverse, if you know the Amberlynn lore, like I'm going to give you an example right now. Have you ever been to a Rocky Horror Picture Show screening? I think you would love it. Yes, I have. They performed the movie while the movie was playing. It was interesting. No, you didn't. <laughs> LOL. Let me just explain for anyone that doesn't know her feelings on this. Okay. First of all, I think whatever your feelings are towards something, own it, okay? Just say what it is. In the past, Amber has trashed Rocky Horror Picture Show, uh, said a lot of negative things about it. She still feels this way, right? Because, of course, she has so much taste in movies. Uh, but just say that then. Say it, girl. Come out with it and say it, okay? Just say, hey, I don't like the thing. I don't like this movie. Her saying that it was interesting is more of what Casey was talking about, what I have said for years. She has figured out on the internet how to speak on the internet. Listen, to be fair, we all have a long time ago, especially if you've been doing this for a decade. Yeah, you know how to speak on the internet uh, to not usually create drama, although I will tell you that there is no such thing as like fully speaking on the internet and doing public speaking on the internet where you don't offend somebody. Right now, I'm currently offending somebody with this Kermit. Look at this Kermit. You see, I'm sure someone's offended. My point here is this. She's learned how to speak whenever she trashed Rocky Horror Picture Show, for the most part, not all the time she learned it. You know, she was trashing it. She got bad feedback. So now she's saying it's interesting, LOL. Um, a little bit disingenuous, just say the truth. Hey, you know, if you have an unpopular opinion, you want to share it, say it, and you know, stand firm on your Kermit, whatever ground, you know what I mean. Do you do those adult coloring books? Nope, I can't even tell you the last time I colored. Okay, this is another example of if you don't know what's going on in the Amberverse, because I see sometimes people come into the Amberverse and they're like, oh my God, oh my God, like why are people saying anything to her? She's the nicest person. Like she's not doing anything. That's the narrative that Amber always tries to serve you, that she does not doing anything. Okay. Let me explain the tea behind this because you see how this looks like a mundane question, mundane answer, no tea, no drama. I'm going to let you in if you don't know what was going on with the Amberverse. This question is directly related to Amberlynn and Twinkie, and Twinkie getting into an unknown substance that was green. Amberlynn, uh, not knowing what the substance was, texting her mom and both of them laughing about her, uh, you know, older dog, Twinkie, getting into an unknown substance, they thought it was funny, and then Amber lying and saying that it was pesto. We all believe that she lied, and I'm going to explain to you in a minute why. That's what this is about. Why? Why, do, why am I saying that's what it's about? The tea is, is that they're asking her if she still doing the adult coloring books. People believe the green on Twinkie's face was the green markers, or maybe the mother's, like, eyeliner, but a lot of people believed it was her markers. Amber Lynn bought markers for years and showed as early as last year 
coloring those coloring books with the markers and literally saying that it was one of the few things that really calms down her anxiety. Now, the Twinkie has an unknown green substance all over her face. She's pretending she doesn't color the coloring books because she knows that she's been accused of having green marker all over Twinkie, do you understand now how there's all this tea and drama attached to mundane questions? You just have to know what's going on behind the scenes. So, Amberlynn, I don't believe you that you're not coloring in the coloring books. You just very recently enough last year said, this is like one of the main things that gets rid of my anxiety. I color the coloring books. It's all to hide what was on Twinkie's face. She claimed it was pesto. By the way, I had gotten a comment on a little bit of an older video that I did on this topic, right? I wanted to address it. I thought about responding to the person, but if anybody else is thinking this, I'm going to say it publicly. The person said, why are you making a big deal about this? You know, like, um, or like, what's the big deal? Um, you know, dogs get into human food all the time. The whole point is, is that Twinkie didn't. Amberlynn made a YouTube monetized video that she earned money on stating that she had no idea what her dog got into. And then she said that she thought it was funny in Instagram uh, Q&As with mom that they left the dog for hours alone. The dog got into something. Amberlynn claims she called the vet. I don't believe she did. And uh, you have to understand that she has a history of abandoning the dog and, in my opinion, mistreating the dog. Like when she went to Chili's to see her ex, Destiny, while her dog couldn't, like, even move and, in Amber's words, quote, shaking in pain. Why am I bringing this up? It's not so much that Twinkie got into pesto, which was, quote, unquote, human food. By the way, pesto is terrible for dogs, okay? But it's that we don't know what Amberlynn's dog got into. Amber, deep down inside, doesn't know. She's saying a story. It's pesto. But, you know, her original statement was, I have no idea what this is. And then she even told her mother she didn't know what this was. Anyways, the point is, when you look at Amber's videos or when you look at her Instagram Q&As, it's all shrouded in controversy. You just have to know the tea behind it. This is great. Does having reaction channels that watch her stuff flatter you? Yes, I feel a lot of different words regarding reaction channels. And flattered is definitely one of them translation, my opinion, is that she hates reaction channels because they're usually, not all of them, not all the time, but um, most reaction channels, most of the time, are right on point with what her audience is thinking, what Amber doesn't want to say. You see how she says she feels a lot of words? Flattery is one of them. Yeah, right. Uh, the words is she wished they didn't exist. She has tried desperately to take them down. She's tried to take apathetic facts down. Bottle. She's emailed apathetic facts so many times, threatening apathetic facts. By the way, if you don't know, saying that she's going to file this. She did file a bunch of copyright strikes, tried to get the channel deleted. She said, Amberlynn Reed has a YouTube video where she says she needed to get apathetic facts videos down. Why? Why are you not confident enough in your own content that you care if somebody re-uploads, you know, anything from you. Uh, she has, in my opinion, it's never been proven. She's gotten Sinatra says, um, into serious trouble on YouTube. And basically this goes all the way back to the channel CXNT. It, it just like, she has for years tried to stop this. I'm going to tell you what she's trying to stop. People saying what they're really thinking. She believes that reaction channels are influencing their audience. You're not doing anything to your audience except alienating them. That's why, in my opinion, you're jealous that uh, you feel that there's like a relationship with reaction channels. But this is, and their audience, this is the thing. Nobody, listen, I know myself personally, if you don't know, I certainly did not make any name for myself on Amberlynn Reed. Who cares? I've been making videos way before I even knew who she was. So... The thing is, is that reactions to public drama by public figures has been happening for years before Amberlynn Reed even became popular on YouTube. It's not so much that it's about her. It's about polarizing public figures such as herself that people have a reaction to. She's mad that the audience is always on the ball and know what's going on. That's what this is about. And they speak for the reaction channel speak for the audience a lot of the times. And she knows, in my opinion, that she can convince some of the people some of the time. She'll never convince the majority. The majority knows the tea.
How can you not like Taylor Swift and put her lyric as a caption? I never denied liking some of her songs. More word manipulation. Amberlynn uses language, in my opinion, to manipulate her audience and anyone reading or listening or consuming her stuff. She's recently been saying Amberlynn can't come to the phone right now because she's busy watching reaction channels and she's upset about the Casey interview. Oh, sorry. Good. I don't want friends. A joke. Uh, yeah, because she's this different person. She's been saying she's this different person. She's been using some, like, Taylor Swift lyrics. She can't stand Taylor Swift. She doesn't like Taylor Swift. She has extensively said how much she doesn't like Taylor Swift. You see the answer of I never denied liking some of her songs? Why not just say, that's a song from her that I happen to like? That would have been a more genuine answer. I never denied liking some of her songs has the same energy as... Oh, no one smokes in this house. Meanwhile, she was smoking for years and just didn't tell you. You understand? She uses words to manipulate. She uses language to manipulate. I think people rage over your TikToks because, and then they make a statement about the way people look, which we do not discuss here because I don't I do not do that. And I think that it's petty. And also, I really uh, don't uh, judge people based on any superficial kind of stuff. I judge people based on their actions. And don't have your confidence keep shining. I didn't know people were raging over my TikToks. Yes, you did. I'm just having fun and enjoying myself. Most people are not raging over her TikToks. She just pick... Look, 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 listen, listen, listen to what I'm going to say to you. Amberlynn recently said that she gets hundreds of questions a day on Instagram and she picks and chooses what she wants. If she didn't know that people were raging over her TikToks, why would she pick a question? saying, I can't believe people rage over your TikToks. She picked this question because she knows that people have a negative response to her TikToks. I can just only give my own opinion about her TikToks. I have never seen TikToks being created the way that she does. Cringy, unusual TikToks that give others secondhand embarrassment. That is my opinion. You know what it is that she's acting like on TikTok? If I could describe it, if you haven't seen it. It's almost as if you get to see what she would be doing like in her mind. Here's my opinion. Why do you turn off, this is gonna be a rhetorical question too, why do you turn off comments on Instagram and TikTok but keep them on YouTube? Here's the real answer. Because YouTube negative comments keep her paid. People keep looking at the video, video keeps loading, making her money. People read negative comments, she makes money. Can't make money that way on Instagram and TikTok. I can assure you that her comments on YouTube would be disabled if only she couldn't monetize them. Every time you post a new selfie, my heart soars. Oh, what a sweet thing to say. Thank you. Gee, Amber, I wonder why you're single all this time. Amber constantly posts that she has all of these crushes. Maybe she's on her seventh one. And she also says all the time how many women and men want her. So, therefore, I'm very surprised that she hasn't entered into your relationship. But I'm really glad you have all these people loving you and wanting you. So surprising you're single. Did you get contacted by a TLC producer recently? We're going to end here on Amba. I'm being asked this so much today. Why? Can someone tell me? Laughing emoji. Oh, my God. What a cool girly. Oh, my God. Um, Apathetic Facts posted something where, like, somebody was trying to reach out to Amberlynn. Here's an opinion from yours truly. That would be me. Amberlynn Reed is never going to go on any of these shows because she's content and happy with her life. Deep down inside, she knows what I'm about to say because, by the way, she's already said it on her channel. In my opinion, if she changes her life, she won't get the same views. And since the views are 40 and 50,000 from 200,000 that she used to get and 100,000 that she used to get, what's next after she changes her life? The 10,000 views? Well, It'll all get back to the original source of the problem once she changes her life. You mark my words on that. But if she goes, it won't be forever because she's only content the way that she's living her life now. Rinse, lather, delusion, Kermit, repeat. Thoughts, comments, Kermits, dislikes, leave it in the comments down below. Let me know what you think about it. Let's move on to foodie beauty drama and Pokemon Go drama. Okay, so let's talk about Foodie Beauty. She basically is very bothered that people don't believe her that she went to the ER. Remember we talked about the delusional ERBs, okay? So here's her community page to let people know that she's not bothered. Here it is, more proof to back up my ER story. Now I'm actually being accused of making the story up, LOL. I am just sharing my journey and people have to spring to make videos or comments calling me a liar or desperately sniff out, go sniff somewhere else, Chantal. Um, anyway, you can think I'm a liar, whatever. I literally at this point, uh, I literally at this point and going forward give zero care what anyone thinks anymore. Well, 
you know what I say? If you didn't care, you wouldn't have written this community page post. We should just get married. Nah. People on a daily basis say outrageous stuff to me that I never respond to and never will. That's just like my thing on YouTube and I advise it to if you make videos for it to be your thing on YouTube too. People constantly say stuff that doesn't make any sense to me personally and things that are not true. Do you see me ever addressing anything? No. What I like to do is I like to take the suggestions, me personally, of my subscribers to, if I can, make my channel and my Kermit a little better. Um, if you did not care, you would not respond to the negativity. Also, you know what I love about Chantal? She always, whenever anything happens, says, oh, why are people running and making videos? Because oh, that's how they make money on YouTube. Oh, why are you, every single time, Chantal, that you need to go to the ER, why are you running and making a video oh, every single time that you, you know, go to the ER? Like, why don't you just go e to the ER like the rest of us and don't make a video? Oh, Oh, because that's how you make videos and that's where you get your content and that's where you make money from. Like, it's so outrageous to me that to this day, um, she can come on the internet and say, I can't believe people are running to make videos. Well, I honestly can't believe that anybody on the internet has to videotape every single time they fart. But here we are. Oh my God, I went to the ER. Oh my God, I saw a tree. Chantal, you have your content and other people have theirs, okay? Also, for the elevator, this is the elevator story. She said that she pried the doors open. People didn't believe her. She got stuck in the elevator. I don't understand why anyone would care really that deeply about this because she lies about everything. So who cares? And also, her kitchen is on fire, a metaphor for everything being wrong in her life anyways. So if she wants to lie about an elevator, how has this changed our lives? Okay, what I meant was I couldn't have been between floors because the indicator said fifth floor. I didn't specify that because you know how I tell stories fast, etc. So people thought it was a lie. And all these emojis, I knew I was on the fifth floor, blah, blah, blah. Also, the elevator, blah, blah, blah. Then she does something that is so outrageously pointless that even a Kermit couldn't help Foodie Booty. So she posts her after summary visit for her ER and you can't see anything except her name. And what is the point? Now, the only thing I do understand like censoring are her allergies. I'm not going to say what could happen if people would know what her allergies are, but um, it's just not a good idea to ever let strangers on the internet, never mind strangers on the internet who dislike you, to let them know what your allergies are. So I agree with her not showing that. But I think it's beyond outrageous to try to post medical information that is all completely censored. Like, all of her, here's some to think about. How come you covered literally everything that you already told us in Kuwait? Remember that little video that she did that she said was a parody? And I thought at the time that it was a parody, to a certain extent. But uh, if you can make parody videos where you say that your that your health, what is the difference between telling us your health information in Kuwait? Like when she would videotape herself at that uh, clinic, she told everybody all her information. But now that she's in Canada, she can't. I wonder why. What is the point of proving that you were at the ER by not proving that you were at the ER? Anyone can doctor up any piece of paper. I'm not accusing her of doing that. I'm just saying that if you're going to actually provide proof of something, how about you provide proof of it? This doesn't prove anything. And you are just showing us how bothered, 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 bothered you are that people are accusing you of whatever. You're just trying to cause drama so more people can make more videos about you. Never let these people uh, insinuate or straight out tell you that having videos being made about them is a negative for them. In fact, if you can go back to before Chantal, Foodie Beauty and Anne Berlin got talked about, how much money they made before they got talked about and how much money they make as they have scandals and as people talk about them, good or bad, because there's no such thing as bad publicity, just in general. They make more money now, Amber and Chantal, that they're talked about. So never let them try to convince you that, oh my God, it's so terrible that people make videos about me. I can tell you more people talk about you in general, in general, obviously there's some exceptions, but in general, um, the more people talk about you, the more money you make. So people that don't like you either don't care about that or, you know, whatever, they just don't care. They're just talking. But I love it when Chantal and Amber play victim and they're like, oh my God, I cannot believe that people are running to make videos. Well, I can't believe that Amber Lynn Reed went on the internet and earned a thousand dollars saying that she has a collapsed lung and then earned another thousand dollars saying that she was misdiagnosed. Give the money back, Amber, if this is just not something that you want to do. Chantal, I can't believe that you used to get paid $20,000 a month to 
rage about your ex non boyfriend but here we are so if you can film a tree nowadays people can make videos about you it's called the entertainment business here's some screenshots from i believe this is the channel piggies um uh like community page and i'm gonna link the channel down below here is what foodie beauty said in salah's live stream you know when she first got to canada i might get bbj back though if it all works out legally uh, it's a civil case she concocted. We're talking, she's talking about FFG, how FFG outsmarted her and, and um, had the cat BBJ live with FFG's sister-in-law. So it's a civil case. She concocted a whole scheme to steal her. I didn't hand her over to her brother and also many, many things I will be getting her for. Don't worry. Okay, th we're going back now to this nonsense about how she plans on suing FFG. This is just my own personal opinion, okay? You have literally no case. First of all, you have waited quite a while. I didn't think she had a case the minute that it happened. But um, just generally, unless somebody commits an outrageous like crime, unless, okay, a lot of things legally are dependent on time. What I'm trying to get at is Joe the legal weasel should be everybody's lawyer. He's Kermit's lawyer. Never mind. I'm just kidding. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that just in general, basically if you wait too long sometimes you can't go after people for stuff okay and you waited like over a year yeah that cat situation bothered you so much that you didn't even leave like you should not have gone anywhere you should not have gone to kuwait you should have immediately ran to the cops or immediately ran to the lawyer immediately and put everything on hold your big marriage on hold if you were so devastated that she supposedly stole your cat but she didn't because you try everybody that's been following the bbj cat story and anyone that's watched my videos on it no she wanted chantal in my opinion it's obvious uh she wanted to get rid of bbj by any means necessary she continuously talked about um, euthanizing the cat, okay, just to get rid of the cat. So she would give it to the first person that asked. By the way, I can't believe we have to go through this one more time. Personally, yes, I don't think she has a case against FFG. Look, you can't say that she stole your cat. She outsmarted you. I agree with that, but she didn't steal. This would be an example of anyone stealing Chantal's cat. Somebody breaks into Chantal's house or walks into Chantal's house, grabs BBJ, and runs out. That is an example of theft of a cat. But the person that has the cat is FFG's sister-in-law. That is the owner of the cat. That is who you gave it to. And her husband, FFG's brother, picked up the cat. Therefore, no one stole it. You gave the cat away willingly. Were you outsmarted? 100%. Let's do a Pokemon Go update. These are just some raids I was doing. This is Weird Deer uh, Raid Day. Let me just start off by saying that this Pokemon Weird Deer is just Stantler evolved. So you know that Pokemon Stantler, for example, I have a Hundo, I have a, you know, nice shiny. Why couldn't I have just evolved it into Weird Deer? This is the same situation as the Cleaver Pokemon, who is just Scizor evolved. You're probably wondering, why can't we evolve these Pokemon into these Pokemon that you see like right now? Why have I not been able to evolve Stantler, who is a holiday Pokemon who's out right now, into Weird Deer? Well, my opinion, just my opinion, not a fact, is that, you know, then we couldn't raid and spend money on raid remote raid passes, right, to raid for him. Fine. So since we did spend the money to remote raid i did a short on this and i was you know talking about it look i understand that pokemon go has completely changed the remote raiding system which is that on a daily basis you're only allowed to remote raid five times a day okay i don't agree with it but okay what could we do my question after that is sometimes we have raid days where you get extra raid passes to remote raid okay and again they're all paid nobody's giving you anything for free so like except for like what they did in the remote raid day is like if you were gonna do local raids and you spun a gym like five times you got extra free raid passes yes you did but as far as remote raid passes nobody's giving you any remote raid passes for free you know you have to buy it why am i bringing this up i personally feel that since we are Paying for remote raid passes, which the price has gone up, by the way, a lot, in my opinion. Uh, why exactly can't we raid unlimited for remote raid days or like whatever, like these like, like just like we had like Mega Garchomp raid day, just like we're having, you know, Weird Deer um, 
raid day, why couldn't we just raid unlimited like we did for GoFest? Like my opinion is it's it's just it should be unlimited. Or how about this? How about 30 to 50 times that you could remote raid? Do you know how many times we were allowed to remote raid on a raid day? 10. Oh, wow. Very, very generous. Thank you. Only five more times than usual. What kind of a raid day is that? Okay. My point is I personally completely respectfully disagree with taking away the remote raid. And I've ranted and talked about it. Understands. I get it that Pokemon Go was created for trainers to get out there and go outside and explore their surroundings. I get it. Oh, look, a shiny. By the way, fun fact, um, I had only ended up with two shinies for the whole day. Isn't it exciting? Does the fun ever start? Moving on. So the shiny is pretty. Um, so basically, like, I understand that that's how the game was created. That's fine. My question here is, they put in remote raid passes when the world completely changed. I think you know what I'm talking about. When, you know, a lot of people got sick, whatever. And so that was a quality of life issue that also made their game much more popular, in my opinion, because now you could raid in the middle of the night. You could raid after work. You could raid when you actually had time with your friends. And it also created a sense of camaraderie. And it really made you depend on your friends in Pokemon Go more. And they depended on you. And you built, by the way, if anyone's interested, a much more stronger relationship, a much more stronger friendship that made you want to get out and go and play, by the way, with your friends even more through remote rating. And so they've now taken this away. And, you know, they keep putting in these little, like, tickets. Like, oh, buy a ticket for winter this. Buy a ticket for this. Or you could buy your friend a ticket. Yeah, nobody, like, okay, I'm going to speak for myself. I buy these tickets sometimes, but, like, I just want a remote raid. Like, just give the people what they want in your game. Like, I, you know... If I had a game that I created, I would be very concerned about the players being unhappy or morale. It was just like when, like, they try to get more people to go out and do the roots. And so they put Mateo there and he didn't even show up for me personally for like a really long time. And they did a Pokemon Go update and then he by magic showed up. My point here is this. The game is not what it used to be for me personally, in my opinion, because I cannot remote raid. And I, I can meet... The idea of you need to go out and, you know, we need to go out and explore and we need to get back to what the game was originally intended to be. I can get back to that idea if at least during the raid days that we can have, we don't even have them. What do we have them once a month? No. So if we have a like raid day or something like that, why can't we at least raid a little bit more than 10 times? Let me know what you think about this, if you made it so far in the video. Okay, this is a quorum raid. Wonderful, riveting. Here's a fun, interesting thing that happened with Pokemon Go. They, by accident, released white and black quorum. Uh, and people that were playing GBL, uh, the Battle Leagues, got them as rewards. Fun! So much fun! None of us have them. Yeah, because we, they weren't supposed to be released at that time. How does that always happen? Why are there always so many glitches? Just, just... As a person that spends money on the game, I'd like to know, but that's just my opinion. Yeah, so they actually released them by accident or whatever. They're not in the game anymore, but whoever has them, well... Yeah, Quorum. That's the raid for Quorum. I don't know. I kind of find this Pokemon, like, okay, nothing special. I wouldn't use him in the Battle League. Like, he has Glaciate, which is, like, that was his update move, which is good. Like, it'll get rid of a Togekiss in the Battle League. But quite frankly, do you really want to take an Ice Pokemon and put him against, like, uh, like a Fairy Pokemon? Probably not. But I see, well, I, I battle um in the Battle League, and I see people, like, using him. Like, he's, like, going out of style. It's just Quorum people, or I hope I'm saying his name right you know this guy that looks like a like bird dragon whatever with ice i don't know um people really like him i i know that the shiny is very pretty last year when he was released um the shiny was like very highly coveted and it did take me a while to get a hundo of this pokemon but 
I don't know. I just would not use this Pokemon in the Battle League. Let me know um, if you battle in the Battle League. What is your? What are some of your favorite top picks? I like to use Togekiss. I like to use that Walrus guy. He looks like a Walrus. I Walrin, whatever. And I also like to like switch out between. I recently gave in and started using Kyogre. Kyogre is one of my least favorite Pokemon. I know I'm gonna make people upset about that who like Kyogre because Kyogre is just like a fish. Okay, whatever. Like, how are you different than Gyarados? Thank you. Thank. By by the way, this is Zekrom. Zekrom is one of my favorite Pokemons ever. Just the way that he fights. Look at that. Look at the way that he battles and fights. He looks amazing. Like, he just looks so cool. I will forever talk to you about how I love Zekrom. First of all, I'm not much of like an electric, um, you know, Pokemon person, but just the way that he battles, the way that he fights, like what he's going to do like in a minute, that, that is so cool to me. Like, he's just very cool. I did a few raids. I have like a hundo, which took like two years to get a hundo of Zekrom, but moving right along. I know people who have like four hundos of Zekrom. Yeah, but, um, so yeah, that, those are my like, um, Master League picks, like Togekiss, uh, Walrin. So recently I've been doing Kyogre. Uh, sometimes I usually do Melmetal and I usually like go between Melmetal and Giratina because sometimes in the middle of the league, it just becomes clear that you just need Giratina because people are constantly putting in Mewtwo, like enough with the Mewtwo, like enough, like enough, like if I see one more Mewtwo, okay, like I don't know, people get obsessed with Mewtwo, like that and can I, I just need to go on a little rant, why are people constantly putting in Dragonite, like what all it takes for Dragonite to be taken out is literally any fairy or ice Pokemon. And, you know, people think they're, like, sneaky. They're putting in, like, Dragonite with superpower. That's an attack that is a fighting attack. It completely gets rid of Melmetal. And I'm just like, okay, well. Meanwhile, so, yeah, so this was me raiding. I'm still, like, very upset about the raiding system where you can only raid remotely five times a day. Mainly because it's literally so hard to get hundos and... And, you know, I mean, I have just only a few Shundos that's shiny 100%. But, like, I'm not even talking about Shundos. Like, it is really difficult now with the rating system to even get a Hundo. That's why I've kind of, like, totally stopped getting Hundos. Because, you know, it's random number generator. Meaning that it's sort of like, you know... Um, random probability. So that's why whenever we used to raid a lot, you know, we used to get a lot of hundos. Yes, yes, I did raid for this Pokemon. So what during community day? Because I just wanted a hundo. He's like a cute little teddy bear. So what? I will raid anything. Anyone. Zekrom again. Thank you, Zekrom, for showing up and saving the day. <sighs> Zekrom, I did. I was a little bit disappointed by Zekrom's like shiny form because you could barely tell that he was shiny. But, you know, so basically those are my thoughts on Pokemon Go. Let me know if you have been raiding for anyone, if you've been like happy with your catches, with your egg hatches. Who do you use in the Battle League? If you use anyone, please let me know. I want to thank you so very much for watching today. I really appreciate your time. You taking the time out of your day to watch today. If you enjoyed today's video, there's going to be a video that's going to pop up on one of the screens. Well, not one of the screens, the screen that you're watching right now. And uh, you could check that video out or you could ignore it or you could like it. You could go dislike it. You could do whatever you want. Thank you so much for being here. You know, I'll see you next time. Bye.